Welcome back. You're watching Squawk Australia on CNBC. Let's head straight back out to Canberra with Karen, who's on the ground there. And, uh, of course, Karen, you've got more analysis on the budget. I believe that you did speak with Australia's longest-serving treasurer, Peter Costello, in his only post-budget interview. What was his reaction to what Wayne Swan had to say? Indeed I did, Manny, and he was fairly scathing. Keep in mind, this is a man who has handled the nation's finances through the highs and the lows, a man famed for running huge budget surpluses, although he did briefly dip into a deficit at one stage. He did repay $100 billion in debt over the course of his term in office. So let's take a listen to him. As we just mentioned, he did speak to us exclusively in his only one-on-one -on -one television interview. Mr Costello, you've had your budgets dissected, praised and attacked in the past and in fact more recently. Give us your report card on the government's budget. I think it's a very confused document actually. Um, on the one hand, the government is trying to say we're in the midst of this enormous financial and economic downturn, but they predict a very moderate recession and a very strong recovery. On the one hand, they wanted to tell us that they were going to be cutting back uh, on expenditures to try and get the budget back into balance, and yet the theme of the budget was more fiscal stimulation. Uh, this is a bipolar budget, different messages at the same time. And because of that, I think it doesn't hit the mark. And uh, the one thing I think we can say about this budget is whatever the forecasts are, the reality is get not going to be as predicted uh, and the important thing I think is to look at what's being done in the early years because there's no promise at all that any of these projections over four, five or six years will be remotely like what happens. If we talk about one of the key forecasts, a contraction and growth of half of a percent over the next year, why can't we achieve that target? Well, I think Australia is better placed than nearly any other economy around the world. Uh, going into this international downturn. After all, we had no net federal debt. We had a budget which was strongly in surplus. We had historically low unemployment. Uh, so we were better placed than practically any other country around the world. Um, where, where this budget falls down, of course, is if it's only going to be a mild contraction, half a percent, why have we got the greatest budget deficit in Australian history? Um, why have we got such a rapid accumulation of federal debt? Now, it's either going to be a mild contraction and our fiscal position should be much, much stronger, or the fiscal position is telling you that the contraction is going to be much, much greater. Uh, but it's, I think, a budget of spin. What they've tried to do is they've tried to spin the forecast to try and fit the story rather than fit actuality. If we break down some of those numbers, a deficit forecast for the next year of $58 billion, what numbers should the government have produced? <laughs> a lot less than that. Um, in May of last year, here's, here's an indication of how to assess this budget. In May of last year, the government said in this financial year there would be a $20 billion surplus, which it turned to a $30 billion deficit. In May of this year, it's saying the forthcoming year there'll be a $58 billion deficit. What will the outcome be? Because judged on the experience of the last 12 months, it could be a lot different to a $58 billion deficit. Let's address some of the attacks by the Treasurer contained in the budget papers and the budget speech that you embarked on reckless spending on the back of the mining boom. Now, you are revered by financial markets for your economic management, but in hindsight, should you have saved more of the surplus? Well, this, of course, is, is the Labor Party's... Um, some, sometimes it's its line, it varies from day to day. Um, one of the lines at the moment is I should have run up bigger surpluses for them to spend. Um, OK, I ran up a $20 billion surplus and I retired all federal debt. And on Monday they said it wasn't more, I should have left them more um, to spend. Um, I don't think that actually. Having paid off all federal debt, having left a $20 billion surplus, having established a future fund, a sovereign wealth fund with $61 billion, having put Australia stronger than any other country in the world, hard to say I should have done more. Um, and in fact, if I'd run up bigger surpluses, they would have wasted them anyway. I think the um, point here, uh, as I look back on it, is uh, perhaps, you know, as I've said earlier, uh, we should have cut taxes more aggressively. Um, but Australians can forget about tax cuts probably for 20 years now, I'd say. Um, we, we will be paying off this federal debt 
for 20 years. Net debt will run up to 13.8% of GDP in 2013-2014. You've gone through the process of repaying $100 billion. What are the challenges the government will face? Well, what, what the government's saying now is they'll build up $188 billion of net debt. Um, but if you actually look at the debt statement, the, the gross debt will be greater than that because there's certain off-balance sheet transactions. And financial markets ought to know that the government will exceed its borrowing limits. This is a big point if you look at this budget. It will have to get parliamentary approval to exceed the borrowing limits. By how much and why? Uh, why? Because in addition to the money that's required to fund all of these deficits, uh, the government's also raising money for all sorts of other projects, such as uh, uh, fibre, uh, such as um, the, the, the so-called business bank. Um, so um, there's more borrowing in here than just the $188 billion of net debt. Uh, now, uh, let's come to that point. Um, it took us uh, 10 years to pay off, 10 years of surpluses to pay off $100 billion of debt. How many years of surpluses will it take to pay off $188 billion of debt? Uh, if you look through these papers, um, the, the furthest projection I could find was 2020, and they're still saying the debt will be around in 2020. Uh, and if you actually take into account that the growth forecasts are extraordinarily optimistic, six years of 4.5% growth, and that still leaves debt in 2020, I think we can safely say that debt will still be there in 2030 or beyond. The Treasurer does raise the point that net borrowings will still be a lot lower than other advanced countries. Does he raise a valid argument? Well, of course, we had a much stronger position than other countries. When, uh, when the United States had a debt-to-GDP ratio of about 50%, we were zero. We had no debt. Uh, in fact, we actually had an asset position. Uh, so we were miles stronger than um, the United States, the United Kingdom. Japan, uh, Britain. What, what made Australia different is that we had no debt. Now, we're no longer different. We're following other countries into debt. Uh, the government's lucky it started from such a strong position because it's been on a big downward slope. Uh, but the fact that uh, uh, the position is still better than the United States or Britain or Europe's got nothing to do with this government's management. It's all to do with the starting point. So former Treasurer Peter Costello there in his only post-budget television interview and just to sum up he's talking about the budget saying it's a confused document, it's a bipolar document and he's saying that in fact raising the key question if there's only a mild contraction of half of a percent why is the government running the biggest deficit in Australian history? Mandy back to you. That was a really good question and it is also a question that we will pose to our guests right after this break. They're going to weigh in.